There may not be an Indian who has not heard of Ram Setu or Adam's Bridge. I'm not referring to the latest film that is getting released, but the actual bridge that exists between India and Sri Lanka. Ram Setu is a chain of natural limestone shoals between Pamban Island, also known as Rameshwaram Island, off the southeastern coast of Tamil Nadu, India, and Mannar Island off the northwestern coast of Sri Lanka. Many claim that this was the bridge that Ram and his Vanaras created when trying to reach Lanka in the epic Ramayana. People and political parties have opposed dredging in that area for religious reasons. But what is the real truth behind this? Is it a naturally occurring structure or was it made by Ram and his monkey gang? That is what we will look in today's video. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which debunks pseudoscience and promotes scientific temper. I'm sure you're all aware of the story of Ram as depicted in the Ramayana. He is said to have reached Rameshwaram on his quest to recover Sita from the hands of Ravan who had abducted her. In order to cross over to Lanka, they created a bridge made of stones which was orchestrated by a person named Nala. Anyways, that is what the myth tells us. Now there are many disputes that historians have made with regards to the location of Lanka. None of the early Ramayana versions provide geographical identifications that directly suggest that Lankapura was Sri Lanka. The Ramayana clearly states that Ravan's Lanka was situated 100 yojanas away from mainland India which is roughly 1213 kilometers away. This island would therefore lie more than 160 kilometers southwest of present day country of Sri Lanka. The most original of all existing version of Valmiki's Ramayana also suggests the location of Ravana's Lanka to be in the western Indian Ocean. It indicates that Lanka was in the midst of a series of large island nations, submerged mountains and sunken plateaus in the western part of the Indian Ocean around the area where Maldives is now. Analysis of several other scholars for evidence of historicity suggest that Lanka cannot be south of the Godavari River which starts from Maharashtra and runs through Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh and Tengana and empties into the Bay of Bengal. The idea that Sri Lanka was the Lankapura of the Ramayana is thought to have been promoted in the 10th century by Chola rulers seeking to invade the island. Some authoritative scholars like H.D. Sankalya locate the Lanka of the epic somewhere in the eastern part of present-day Madhya Pradesh. Of course, these are all interpretations of the mythical text by various scholars and has no scientific backing. So if you go by the interpretations, Ravana's Lanka might not be Sri Lanka, thereby breaking the claim of Ram Setu itself. If we go with this evidence, then I can stop this video right here. If Lanka is elsewhere, then this couldn't be the bridge that Ram supposedly built. End of story. But hey ho, we rationalists are not satisfied with just one evidence sometimes. So let's march on. So why is this Ram Setu called Adam's Bridge, you may ask? What is the connection between Ram and Adam? Well, some early Islamic sources refer to a mountain in Sri Lanka as Adam's Peak. As per Semitic religions, the first humans were Adam and Eve. The story goes that God banished Adam and Eve because they ate the fruit of knowledge and evil. Poor Adam supposedly fell on this peak which now bears his name. He is later said to have made his way to India using this bridge. An Iranian scholar named Abu Rayyan Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Biruni is said to have given the peak this name. Later, a British cartographer who prepared a map of this area referred to the structure as Adam's Bridge and the name stuck. It was reportedly passable on foot until the 15th century when storms deepened the channel. Ramnatha Swami temple records say that Adam's Bridge was entirely above sea level until it broke in a cyclone in 1480. The total length of the bridge is around 48 kilometers, though some websites say it is 30 kilometers. The sea is very shallow there and hence until the terrible cyclone happened, you could have perhaps walked over to Sri Lanka from Palmen Island. Let's keep the myths to a side now and look at the scientific side of things. Much of its importance and fame came when NASA published a series of satellite images of this area way back in 2002. News articles claim that NASA said it was a man-made structure. However, NASA distanced itself from the claim saying that the images reveal nothing more than a long naturally occurring chain of sandbanks. 
NASA in a statement said the images reproduced on the websites may very well be ours but their interpretation is certainly not ours. Remote sensing images or photographs from orbit cannot provide direct information about the origin or age of a chain of islands and certainly cannot determine whether humans were involved in producing any of the patterns seen. So what is Ram Setu in reality? Considerable differences of opinion and confusion exist about the nature and origin of the structure. Some say it is a simple sandbank. A sandbank or a shoal as it is referred to in oceanography is a natural submerged ridge, bank or bar that consists of sand or other material. It rises from the bed of a body of water to the surface. Several such sandbanks exist in many parts of the world. Here are some pictures of some beautiful sandbars similar to Ram Setu in other parts of the world. Beautiful, aren't they? There are many other theories as to how this section of land could be formed naturally. One such theory considered it to be formed by a process called accretion and rising of the land. Accretion is a process by which material is added to a tectonic plate or a landmass. As the landmasses slide over each other, sediments are deposited on the boundaries of these plates. These buoyant materials will be stitched to the edge of the continental crust which is what could have happened at this place. Other studies suggest that this structure might be what is called as a tombolo. A tombolo is a landform which is created when a sandbar gets attached to an island. So Ram Setu could be a double tombolo as it connects two islands, Manar and Pamban. Similarly, there are many other theories that have been proposed and I won't go through each of them for want of time. However, I cannot avoid this one theory that proposed that Ram Setu was created by the breaking away of Sri Lanka from the Indian mainland. If you look at the map of Sri Lanka and India, you would see that they could have fitted like a jigsaw puzzle. And maybe they were connected some years ago. Anyways, all of the studies provide evidence that Ram Setu is a natural occurrence and not the handiwork of an army of monkeys. Also there is a huge market for selling pieces of rocks that are supposed to be part of the bridge. According to the legend, the stones did not sink into the water because they were inscribed with the name Ram. However, the stones which are on sale are normal pumice stones. Pumice is a stone that floats on water. Pumice is the name given to a hardened form of lava when it comes out of a volcano. The inside of a volcano has very high pressure and can be as hot as 1600 degrees Celsius. When the lava comes out of the volcano, it means a cool air and sometimes seawater which is around 25 degrees Celsius. The huge difference in temperature gives the lava a cold shock so it freezes almost immediately. So the bubbles get trapped in the freezing stone giving it a very spongy appearance. In some kinds of pumice, the air bubbles can make up to 90% of the volume making it float in water. The scammers use this to their advantage and devotees pay huge amounts to carry off these stones like some kind of a prasad. Even amidst all this, there has been several scholars who have steadfastly clung to the belief that this is indeed the bridge that Ram made. However, in 2007, the Archaeological Survey of India and the Government of India informed the Supreme Court of India that there was no historical proof of the bridge being built by Ram. Now what are the implications of believing in such nonsensical stories? Well, take the example of Sail Samudram project. Currently ships travelling to the east coast of India has to circle around Sri Lanka to reach the other side. Since the water between Pambal and Manar Islands are very shallow, big ships cannot pass through. So in 2005, the government of India approved a multi-million dollar Sedu Samudram shipping canal project. This project aimed to create a ship channel across the Park Strait by dredging the shallow ocean floor near Danishkodi. The channel is expected to cut over 400 kilometers off the voyage around the island of Sri Lanka. That is a saving of 30 hours of ship time. But then Indian political parties including the BJP, AIADMK, RJD and Janata Dal Secular and some Hindu organizations have opposed the dredging through the shoal on religious grounds. Just to get a few more supporters, they have added some economic and environmental claims to their cause. They say that the project would have an impact on the area's ecology and marine wealth and a potential loss of thorium deposits in the area and increased risk of damage due to tsunamis. Of course, we all know what the agenda really is. We can, in this age and era, do this project without hurting the environment. 
we do have the technology to do that and when it comes to tsunamis what is a small line of sandbar going to do stop it seriously and what if the tsunami comes from the western side you can't ask a tsunami to come from one particular side can you and what about the extra fuel used by ships to go around sri lanka isn't there no environmental issue there but the blind religiosity and vested interest of the political parties to appease their vote banks have resulted in the project not seeing the light there is also a question of why there is no bridge between mainland india and rameshwaram currently the famous pamban bridge connects mainland india with rameshwaram if ram actually reached rameshwaram and then built a bridge then how would one account for the fact that there is not a sign of a bridge between mainland india and rameshwaram how did they cross the 2 km stretch if you say there were a single landmass back then then you could say the same thing for pamban island and sri lanka which eliminates the need for a bridge to be built finally last year the central advisory board on archaeology a government body coming under the archaeological survey of india has approved a proposal for an exploration project to find out how and when ram setu was formed the research is being conducted by council for scientific and industrial research and goa based national institute of oceanography and it is focusing on the entire process behind the formation of adams bridge hopefully the findings of the study would lay to rest the mystery surrounding ram setu and it would be evident that it is indeed a natural formation a lot of taxpayers money is going to be wasted to satisfy the egos of some believers of fairy tales it remains to be seen whether these studies can remove the mental block and delete the software called belief and to install an antivirus against the bug called religiosity now there is a movie releasing next week starring akshay kumar which promises to fuel the hype around this structure the plot apparently revolves around an atheist archaeologist turned believer who must race against time to prove the true existence of ram setu before evil forces threaten to destroy it going by the current political climate it looks to be another one supporting the baseless claim and win the cheers of a confirmation biased crowd i hope videos like these help in installing the much needed antivirus in the minds of the believing people please let me know your thoughts in the comments please click like and share this video with others in case you found the information useful so that people would know the real truth behind these fabricated cooked up stories i will see you in another video real soon until then it's bye bye from pale blue thoughts